social media. I just started uh, recording, so so all the informed consent is on that record as well. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. So we'll be taking uh, our proper formal group photo at uh, um, after the uh, remarks of Mr. Mike, probably at uh, 4.20 or 4.25. And then oh. um, I, I won't be taking random screenshots because uh, I do need to seek consent of you all uh, before taking pictures. So over to you, Ali. Thank you, Ms. Shamila. Um, it is always uh, good to, to have the four facilitated as well. Do not taking all the responsibility on the shoulders. So I really like that the way you explained. Um, I think we will start uh, with your permission, Ms. Shandila, um, and the people will join in as we move along. Please, please um, go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, because there is something that we want to share with the, as the PDC as well. Um, um, so with your all permission, we have started the recording. Um, and as Shandila mentioned, that the recording will be shared on the official page of Pakistan News Alumni Network as well. Um, and this is our humble request that if you have any no problem with the video recording, so please switch on your camera. So we have that face-to-face -face interactions and question answers and I can see you all and you all see me. Um, it's just a, um, an, an alternate to the face-to-face -face session. All righty, um, allow me to share this feed, uh, my screen with you all. And uh, we will start with this. Please give me a thumbs up if you can see this uh, screen. All right, only one thumbs up. Yo, Mike, thank you. All right, so uh, I officially welcome you to the three-day master class uh, on the regional approach to the air quality and the environment. I'm Mohammed Ali. I'm uh, the program manager at National Professional Development Center. For the next three days, I'll be your facilitator for this session as well. Uh, if you have any problem in the... Uh, So it should not create a noise for other people during the session. Thank you for doing that. All right, uh, uh, I welcome Ali. Ali, yeah, Ali being host. Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, I guess my internet is breaking. Being uh, being host of the session, you have also got rights to mute. Just go up, Karna. Chahi. In case there is some distortion, I have just muted someone. Jinka mic was on, and there was distortion. So apologies. Thank you, Ms. Shanila, for uh, highlighting that. I would request all the participants to do it yourself. So, uh, you know, um, I think we're all, uh, we all know the Zoom uh, from that we're using from the last one year or so. Um, <clears throat> all right, so welcome to this session. This is a three day master class. As Shanila mentioned, this is the first phase of our uh, uh, two, day, two phases. We are doing online because of this uh, corona situation. And inshallah, our second phase would be face to face, where we, we will be inviting all to dust and have that face to face experience. Um, just a little, uh, a few norms that we should uh, we should know before we start officially. That you should ask questions, as I was mentioning about. You should ask questions. Um, you know, for example, if you take a break, so please come back at the scheduled time. Um, also, we, we encourage you to ask questions and the question will be replied in this manner, answer it immediately, or they may, you may be asked to wait, there, some other section might be coming and your question will be most relevant to that uh, section, or the question may be answered in a specific type or in the Q&A sessions. We'll try to have all the questions answered by the end of the session, inshallah. Training will be conducted in English and in Urdu or a mix of both languages. And uh, this is a request, uh, a humble request to all of you that political, religious, or any discriminatory or derogatory comments or arguments would not be allowed in this uh, session. Um, so I have shared a detailed agenda with all of you um, for three days agenda, but for today, we are gonna be having, starting with the NAS Professional Development Center, followed by uh, opening remarks from the uh, representative, Mike from uh, US Embassy. 
then we'll have a pre-assessment uh, and then we'll continue with our uh, session as well. So um, I'm, I'm assuming you already know about the NAST, but let me uh, allow me to share a few um, information about the NAST. NAST, uh, this is the broad structure, uh, the organogram that we, we uh, under which we are operating the NAST. President of Pakistan is the patron in chief, prime minister is the chancellor, uh, army chief, chief of army staff is the chairman, board of governor, and rector is the chief executive, and also we are uh, reporting to the Ministry of Information Science and Technology. Um, as you, you might have heard, or if you're not, so as per the QS World University Ranking 2021, uh, NAST is the Pakistan number university in employer reputation and among top 50 in the world universities. <clears throat> um, when it comes to uh, the Asia, um, QS Asia University Ranking, we are still the number one and uh, in, in terms of uh, ranking and also number uh, uh, 76 in the Asia. And the most important thing that I want to highlight here is the, uh, as for the QS ranking, top 50 under 50 university, the, the young university, we are number one in the Pakistan and number 41 in the world. Um, NAST is the only university in Pakistan which is SDG aligned, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, all our operations, all our academic and student engagement, research and innovation, operations and governance and stakeholder management are uh, is sustainable uh, SDG aligned. And this is the only university in Pakistan. And we are having a full-fledged uh, department working on the operation alignment, um, realignment with the policy level and the activities level as well. When it comes to the NUS Professional Development Center, it was uh, formed in 2007. Our, our uh, mission statement is to be the most trusted and uh, partner for our client in learning and development. We offer three kind of four kind of services. We offer open enrollment, the short programs uh, for capacity development of the industry partners. We offer diploma programs having four and six months duration. We offer customized training solutions like this one. And also we are offering e-learning solutions where um, organizations based on the organization learning needs. Uh, so these are the thematic areas that we, we, we are working in. Uh, is the different areas uh, and in every area we have so many different programs for that we have done um, and these are the uh, our facilities that we when we when it comes to our tagline is the NAS professional type development tagline is to um, provide exceptional learning experience to our clients but by exceptional learning mean that it starts from the learning objectives to all the way from delivering the training and that all we do in a very um, uh, unique way. <clears throat> so far, we have conducted uh, 1,250 trainings for 850 plus organizations and around 50,000 participants have attended our training um, since 2007. Uh, so that's all uh, from the NUS Professional Development Center. And I will now um, welcome um, our guest for the opening remarks, Mike Berenson. He works in the U.S. Embassy uh, Islamabad in the economic um, sections and cover environment, science, technology, and health issues for Mission Pakistan. Prior to joining the State Department, Mike worked in operation management, finance, professional sports in the private sector. He also served in the military, deployed throughout Europe, Africa, and Asia. And he has a degree in communication from Washington State University and also hold master degree from University of um, Webster University. So welcome, Mike, to the session. Okay. Um, can you all uh, see me and hear me? Yes, we can. All right, great. So first off, uh, I just want to thank um, the National University of Technology, of Science and Technology, and the Pakistan-U.S. Alumni Network for this great collaborative effort with the US mission in Pakistan and executing this masterclass program. Now I know this masterclass was scheduled for July, 2020 and changed into a two part hybrid program. So we at Mission Pakistan are very excited that it's finally happening. Someone might have a, a microphone on there. Yeah, um, just all right, great. Um, so it's really great to see so many US government exchange alumni of different programs and fields from across Pakistan. And this effort will help our alumni conceive new and creative ideas to address air quality issues in their communities in Pakistan and in, in the region. 
Addressing the climate crisis and combating climate change are major priorities for the United States and President Biden. The Biden administration is setting a course for the United States to tackle the crisis at home and abroad and is striving to reach net zero emissions economy wide by the year 2050. Back in January, President Biden signed the instrument for the United States to join the Paris Agreement. He appointed John Kerry as our special presidential envoy on climate. And by February, the United States was officially back in the Paris Agreement. Since then, the United States has aggressively renewed its commitment to fighting climate change and has been, getting, been engaging leaders around the world to accelerate cooperation on climate. In April, at President Biden's Virtual Leaders Summit on Climate, the United States had an aggressive U.S. emissions target of a 50 to 52 percent reduction below 2005 levels by 2030. At that summit, other countries also made ambitious commitments, and we encourage those who have not increased their climate ambition to increase their goals too. As we get closer to COP26 in Glasgow this November, we encourage the whole world to be on board, committed, and ready to take the necessary steps to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, I know this masterclass will be focused on air pollution, and you may know that at US, the US mission in Pakistan, right here at the embassy in Islamabad, and at our three consulates in Lahore, Peshawar, and Karachi, we have reference grade air quality monitors that collect air quality data and publish it online on Twitter and on our smartphone app called Zephyr, which was created by the US Department of State and anyone can download it and access that information. So as this group I'm sure knows, good air quality data um, is critical for human health and for economic prosperity. And it's critical to know what's in the air that we breathe so we can make healthy life choices. It's also critical to know what's in the air so we can develop solutions to mitigate air pollution, which I know this group here is already doing or on the way to doing. So on behalf of the US mission in Pakistan, thank you all for participating in what I know will be a useful collaboration in addressing air quality issues. And I hope events like these can better help us understand the problems our world faces so we can develop innovative solutions to keep all of us healthy and pro prosperous. So thank you all, and I hope you enjoy the masterclass, and I, I look forward to seeing how it goes over the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. That was so insightful. Thank you for uh, sharing the in, um, insights with us. Uh, as Shanila mentioned about the group photo, we would like to take this opportunity to have a group photo uh, in your presence, Mike, um, uh, with your permission. So I would request all the participants to switch on your camera. Uh, I hope Ms. Shanila is, will be taking the yep. screenshot, right? Yep, let's, yeah, let's wait for a couple of seconds sure, because sure. I can still see, I can still see 20 non-video participants. Yes. Now they're 19. So let's, let's wait for a couple of so, more so seconds. So that, yeah. Yeah. Sort of switch on their cameras for this, if, if uh, for the whole session, if it's not possible, please do it at least for this session. So for the group photo session. Um, yep. It's possible for you. Okay. We'll oh, wait. so uh, I guess like 16 more people are like non video participants, but I guess that's like by choice. So on the count of choice. three, yeah. Uh, one, one request before you take this session um, I would request all the participants to make this uh, X factor, you know, which is a lot noise or a lot seriousness. Let's make this break the seriousness and take it uh, to a lighter level. Kindly, this is the first thing. Hat upar. And make the X. You all know how to make this, right? Yes. Like okay. this. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. Now, Shanita, okay. you can take it. Now give, give, no, give me three seconds. On the count of three. One, two, two and three. three. Okay. And uh, let me take another one because we are, mashallah, a big group today and a okay. few people are splitting and they are going on the next page. Okay. Uh, on the count of three. One, two, three. Perfect. That's great. Thank Sorry. you so Thank much. You. Back you to you, Ali. Thank you for doing that. Uh, that was awesome. Thank you all for participating. It's, um, it's, you're all so great. I love you the way you're all participating in these activities. And I'm looking forward to these three days engagement. It will be great fun, inshallah. So allow me to come back to my, my, way, of, my way of doing things. <laughs> All right, so it's time for a pre-assessment. I'm going to share this link with you all in the um, <clears throat> chat box or also on the WhatsApp groups. 
So you are all requested to please uh, fill this form. Uh, we will take next 20 minutes for this uh, assessment. Upload ch chat box, take click. You can click from here. I'm also sharing it in on WhatsApp group as well. We have 20 minutes. Uh, there will be a post assessment as well. So this is a kind of a mandatory kind of a thing. You have to do it. Okay. Uh, I shared the link in the uh, chat box. Please click it from here. If you're not able to do it, I'm sharing it on WhatsApp group as well. Um, and after 20 minutes, this link will be expired. You will not be able to access this link. So you're all requested and um, to, to please uh, access this link and answer the question as per your understanding. There is nothing right and wrong. We just want to see your understanding prior to starting the session. Uh, what is your current understanding on this topic or on the issues that we're going to discuss during these three days? And I just want to add over here that please don't try to use Google for seeking help because we are doing this pre assessment just to have an idea what is your current level of understanding and that is going to help the teams to uh, uh, customize the uh, training session and to customize the training material which is about to come in upcoming sessions so let's be honest with each other and let's be honest while filling out the form and um, uh, the clock has already started ticking. So let's let's start uh, filling our forms. So by 4:20 we have started this P assessment. By 4:40 we will close it. So um, I would request uh, Mr. Answer, coordinator for Mass Professional Development Center, to please. Uh, write down all the participants who are present here for our attendance purpose or uh, you have the list of the participants who are supposed to join so please uh, write off their name uh, the people who are here and who are not for our own record i hope and i'm assuming that you're all uh, and the, the link is accessible to all of you just say hi yes okay something <laughs> yes it is okay good thank you thank you sir a job group key messaging setting is to you yeah is a facilitator come as a jazz at the name of the skill is a communication lag or at all i try to do it I have changed the system and you can message to anyone. I hope you're not messaging during the assessment. <laughs> All right, just on the night or not. You're not able to. Uh, G, please check your WhatsApp. Miss Atia, you're not able to access, so please uh, check your WhatsApp. I've shared the link on WhatsApp as well. I'm seeing you directly here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not in the WhatsApp group. Okay. So, How do you have an email address? Drop me your email address. I'll send you an email. Yep, yep. Okay. Thank you. You're most welcome. Unable to copy your email address for some reason. Hmm. 
do we have to enter the email address twice in the pre-assessment form? Uh, no. If it requires, so just I, see, I see two slots for email. Okay. You can ignore one. It is not. Okay. Some technical nature or something. Uh, Miss Ati, I'm not able to copy your email address. I don't know for some reason. G. Ms. Satya, I've been able to send you my email. Please check your email. Uh, please give me a thumbs up when you receive the email. Okay, good. Jaji, I'm getting a response. So what we do is there are 50 questions. So we'll extend 10 minutes. So we'll give you 30 minutes. So by 1014, by 1050, we'll do it. Okay, take your time. The answer is so much is the response. Or as Shahnila has mentioned, okay, this is not something that we uh, pass and fail uh, criteria. Hai. This is just to help us that you have understanding where we are and how much we have to do customization. Ki hai. After all, we all want to give you best experience, uh, a best learning experience. You have to do this class. Ke liye bhi hai. So, yeah. Once you are done, up uh, submit करने के please check uh, check box में done का message या कोई भी message कर दें, so we know.
मैं सिर्फ इसलिए अनाउंस कर रहा हूँ कि सो बाकी लोगों को भी मोटिवेशन मिले थ्री अनाउंस इज सबमिटेड सो फार जिन लोगों ने रिस्पॉन्स सबमिट किया है अगर वो मुझे बताए मेरी आवाज़ आप लोगों को क्लियर आ रही है आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू क्रॉस चेक ऑल राइट यस यस बिल्कुल ठीक है I just wanted to cross check. Right. Very nice, Jim. it was a tough one all right um 20 minute pass 10 more minutes to go those who have submitted well done those who have not please hurry up you have 10 more minutes अली बिन मेहमान थैंक यू
Awesome. We all know how to use the uh, reactions in the Zoom, right? Great. In the next five minutes, I'm going to ask you to give me a thumbs up using that reaction, not your hand thumbs up, right? All right, two people. Good. Three, four, awesome. Um, am I audible, Alisa? All right, G, five more minutes to go. Five more minutes. Ms. Shanila Puchri, okay, how many people have joined from mobile? Please reply to her. She has, all right, Sima Zahil. She has planned something really cool for you all. G, uh, Muhammad Kasi. Uh, because this uh, is going to be a long journey. Uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll be engaged till eight o'clock. So I guess we need to we need to plan some energizers for you all so that stuck in your chairs. <laughs> Hi, Next four minutes. Those who have not submitted, please submit your responses. The next four minutes. All right.
All right, the next three minutes. If you have not submitted your response, please submit. You will not be able to submit your response after um, the 4.45. G, uh, what response do I have to submit? Akif Saab, uh, we are conducting a pre-assessment test and uh, we shared the link in the group and the chat box as well. And uh, we're taking the responses uh, of your current understanding on the topics that we're going to ask during the sessions in the next three days. So if you have late joined, I don't know what time have you joined, but um, Ms. Shainila to, to respond on that. Uh, Ms. Shainila, please look into the Ms. Sayyid Akif questions. Uh, Akif, if you can manage. Uh, am I audible now? Uh, okay, Akif, uh, can you man? All right, in G. Next, like, 10 to Time is almost minutes because, up. like, for please uh, give me a thumbs up, thumbs up like this, or thumbs up on the screen as well that you have submitted your response like this. Well, let's let's all try this um, zoom reaction thumbs up let's all do it together okay let's all do it i want to see it on everyone's screen thumbs up on your screen okay okay good 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 nice very nice g all done Ms. Hera, have you done it all the people who have who are on um, who are not on video please uh, give us a thumbs up so at least we know that you have submitted G, just click on the thumbs up button so we know you have submitted. All right, done. Anyone who has not submitted so far, anyone? Please share the link. Okay, we can manage all in the parallel process. Okay, share G. Ms. Shanila, I've shared the link in the chat box. All right. We all have done it. There is no one left, I'm assuming. Uh, no one left. Mr. Mahmoud Ali, uh, this is Ilyas Hussain. Uh, I'm unable to fill the form. Right, I just joined. Um, with this, I would request the coordinator answer to switch off the um, responses. That should not be uh, accessible any further to the exception that Ms. Shanila has mentioned, um, the one. All right, G, so let's come back to our session, the, the agenda that we have to cover for today. Allow me to share my screen as well again for a few more minutes. Wonderful uh, effort so far. Thank you and uh, thank you for efforts. Ms. Shanila, whenever you want to intervene, you just let me know. All right, so moving forward, we are going to um, let me introduce our first speaker, uh, our first speaker, the speaker, uh, the trainer who has designed this whole program, uh, who is the, um, who, who is the, uh, you know, the technical lead uh, trainer for this program. Um, allow me to share something about him, Professor, and uh, allow me to introduce him. All right. All right, G. Professor Doc, uh, Dr. Muhammad Fahim Kokar. He is the uh, head of department in the Institute of Environmental Science, Engineering, National Science and Technology, NAST. Um, he had his doctoral degree from Germany, followed by three, po uh, three post doctorates, one from Germany, two from Unite uh, University. I don't know how to not pronounce that uh, Persian name. He would help me with that from the France. Uh, he ex excelled himself in satellite remote sensing. Um, and also, uh, he worked on various European uh, research projects, 
um, like Novik, Gems, and Mac within six and seven framework of European uh, Commission as well. At um, NUST Institute of uh, Environment Science and uh, Science uh, and Engineering, uh, Dr. Coker is the team leader. Uh, he's the heading the department uh, and for the climate change and atmospheric chemistry of research group. He's also motivated to explore the atmosphere um, composition over Pakistan and to prepare regional database of different greenhouse and tree uh, trace gases by exploit exploiting both satellite and ground based observations. So welcome Dr. Fahim to the session. Uh, thank you, Ali, for the kind words and kind introductions. Am I uh, audible and yes. loud enough? Hello? Ali, am I loud and clear enough? He is with us. Dr. Fahim, Fahim, can, hear can you? you hear us? I can Ali, see you, good. but... Uh, your mic is not uh, audible. Oh. Ali, am I audible to rest of all? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, Ali, can you make me a host that I can share my screen? Yes, I, I can. I think uh, Ali has some problem with his uh, audio. Uh, Ali, you have to make me the host. All right. Uh, I think, Sir Fahim, can you can you hear me now? Yes, I do. Do you oh, hear oh. me? Yeah. Yes. So you have to change my status because I'm still a participant. Sure, sorry. My apologies. Answer. Okay, great. Thank you, Ali. Uh, first of all, apologies for this uh, short uh, inconvenience and do accept my apologies if uh, it's very basic for uh, some of you, but I know that there is a diverse background of people uh, as an audience. So I will start from very, book, uh, very basics about introduction um, by introducing atmosphere, and then air pollution and then air quality and how their quality is actually meant for that in which are actually the main parameters that should be taken account and then the sources and their impact for each uh, uh, parameters uh, and then so and later i will uh, at the end of the session i would like to take your answers and see how I, this introductory session was uh, before i start with the further details i would like to give you a very key message for that this is particularly about the ad system in principle, it refers to the Earth's interaction between physical, bi biological, and chemical processes that all together constitute an Earth system. And for simplicity, actually, we atmospheric scientists divide this Earth system into four important spheres, which are referred as biospheres, hydrospheres, geospheres, and atmosphere. So one thing which I would like to tell you that this system is a very fragile system and it's a very closely knitted system. And if you disturb or uh, uh, add something in one system that has re repercussion to all other three uh, spheres as well. For instance, if, uh, for instance, if we take an example of geosphere, so for instance, in case of a, a volcanic eruption, so what will happen? How, how it is going to impact all the other systems? So for instance, biosphere, it can have a phys physical damage to the vegetation and also the biotas, the reptiles and other vertebrates as well, uh, through magma flows and all, all these things. And the second thing it could be, it can impact the vegetation through, by indirect way, first it will impact the atmosphere, 
there will be a lot of pollutants and the particles in inside the atmosphere they will impact the radiation and then uh, consequently the biosphere will be impacted similarly when the atmosphere is impacted it might have repercussion on the hydrosphere that that's why we have some uh, precipitation uh, torrential rains and some uh, some uh, sometimes we do have the heat waves as well and if if you look into how this hydrosphere is directly uh, uh, impacted by the lithosphere and geosphere or volcanic eruption so it can add uh, a lot of aerosols and it can impact the cloud condensation nuclei and that can also actually suppress uh, in both way direct and indirect way by adding um, having more precipitation or even the polluted uh, clouds are actually uh, the spread the 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 precipitation rate is quite suppressed by the contamination of these pollutant particularly the toxic and, and one example could be the acid rain particularly which has again repercussion to the biosphere and also all type of pollutants so what, one important aspect of this earth system is actually the energy that is driving all, all these spheres so somehow the, the the only source this only source of energy is the sun which have providing uh, energy to all these spheres and it's kind of, kind of the main driver so very much uh, uh, important is the atmosphere i mean all, all of the rest of spheres are very important as well but atmosphere because that that extends from the surface up to 400 kilometers and it's a physical indicator of pollution response because whatever it will be emitted that will add into the atmosphere and it also acting as a sink of pollutants particularly the gases and particulate matters and even the water vapors as well so uh, it it it's going to be directly impacted in the various way so now i would like to give you an uh, start with uh, start very basic introduction about the earth's atmosphere it's a very thin layer if you consider as compared to the universe even the solar system it's a very very thin layer that is mixed mixture of gases and that is blanketing our earth and it hardly goes up to 400 kilometers and the, uh, it's very dense within first 5.5 kilometers of uh, uh, atmosphere and um, almost 90 percent is within the first five uh, or five kilometers and uh, or 199 percent is within the first 100 kilometers and the rest of one percent is actually three 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 to four hundred kilometers so uh, there we we you are all familiar with that so we have the, the major component the composition of atmosphere mainly comprised of nitrogen and Di nitrogen and oxygen, which constitute about 99%, and the trace elements, 98%, uh, and then the trace elements, which includes uh, inert gases like argon, helium, uh, and then carbon dioxide and methane, nitrous oxide, and other all trace gases. They are actually very, very minute fraction uh, of the Earth's composition, but still, I mean. The this is like the composition that nature has established. So it has capacity to go more than this. But even though nowadays you might have heard about a lot of uh, heard about climate change. So this is mainly about the greenhouse gases, which are even not a fraction of a percentage in the atmospheric composition and even the trace gases, but their repercussions are quite huge and their concentrations are increasing on an annual basis, like uh, the CO2 concentrations are increasing just 7 to 10 ppm per year, but still its uh, consequences are huge that even, I mean, uh, Pakistan is uh, very much vulnerable to the, uh, uh, the bad impact of climate change. And, and similarly, we have uh, the bad air pollution and air quality conditions, uh, particularly in the major cities as well. So uh, this, I would like to uh, request you to focus on this, uh, this uh, graph over here. So first you, you see, uh, I, will detail, uh, I will explain you in detail about the layers of atmosphere. 
But the very first layer is troposphere where we have the maximum concentration of these pollutants. And the, the main important thing is actually the degree of penetration of incoming solar radiation that should be. So you see the radiation up to 100 nanometer that goes up to the mesopause. So that mainly remains in the thermopause, thermosphere. And then the next one is like 220 two, two nanometer that can go up to the stratopause and then the stratosphere 30, 330 nanometer and the rest of the visible light in some part of ultraviolet light uh, UVA that can penetrate up to the surface. So the very important thing is, okay, the, here I have actually the two different color schemes. The, the, the cyan color is representing the, the pollutants which are coming from the anthropogenic origin, but the red are actually in the natural world. So you see the temperature that has actually significantly changing within the layers, for instance, here with the first layer, we have up to 300 Kalon. Then tropopause, we have 210, 280, and then 175, and then we have more than 300 Kalon in the exponential. So uh, just, just, just to tell you, I mean, this is exactly uh, the combination of these, the, uh, the radiation and the protein that actually um, convert this uh, behavior, uh, that, that uh, the temperature is reflected because of these two parameters. So this is how the temperature looks like. For instance, here the very first first layer troposphere, which extends 10 to two, uh, on average 10 to 15 kilometer, depending on the the place, location, and the season as well. Uh, in the summer season. Uh, it will be extending up to um, some places 20 or 18 kilometers. And uh, at the polar region, it's mainly up to 10 and 11 kilometers. But some, uh, but during the winter season, the same location might have uh, like uh, four or five kilometers in the polar region and uh, just uh, hardly uh, six, seven, eight kilometers in the other regions where we have maximum sun exposure. So you see, the temperature in the troposphere start decreasing with respect to the altitude. And then there is uh, a region where is the temperature comes stable. And we call these pause region. Normally the first will be the tropopause region. And then the temperature starts again in the stratosphere with respect to the altitude. And then comes the stratopause region and then temperature start decreasing again. And then there is a stable region and then the temperature starts increasing again, but exponentially. So if, if I go back, so you see here, this is mainly driven by the radiation because the less the nanometer of wavelength of the radiation, it's higher in the energy level. So this is the why the reason we have exponential increasing temperature in the thermosphere and relatively, mesosphere is relatively very shallower layer. And here we have less constituents, particularly nitrogen and oxygen. And so the less uh, heat is trapped or radiation interacts with these particles. In the stratosphere, we have uh, mostly the ozone that actually start heating up the stratosphere because of uh, mainly consumption of our penetration. Uh, interaction with the UV radiation. And in most of the weather and uh, happening that is happening actually in the, the troposphere and most of the constituents actually are located in the troposphere. And this is uh, uh, the temperature actually start decreasing with respect to the altitude. This is mainly because of adiabatic lapse rate where uh, the, the, the energy is actually contained within the air parcel. It's not uh, uh, shared with the surrounding as well. So this is actually the reason. Uh, yeah, so uh, so in, in, in principle, the, temp the, 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 the behavior of temperature is nonlinear and it's uh, like in troposphere, it's uh, start decreasing and then in stratosphere it starts increasing as well and then mesosphere it starts decreasing and thermosphere it, uh, increasing again. Okay, and uh, so we call this temperature inversion or inversion layers as well because of the 
temperature scheme. But if you look at the pressure on the other side, so it's kind of a linear decrease. So, uh, but it's, it's uh, the pressure of the atmosphere is very decreased from one atm atmospheric. Um, I mean, a thousand millibar at sea level to nearly zero at uh, thousand kilometers. So it decays faster at lower temperatures. It is a, a rule of thumb that every 5.5 kilometers atmospheric pressure is in the half. So it's a linear decay of the pressure or decrease, but contrary to the temperature, it has several inversion layers. And mainly this is a combination of the incoming radiation and also the constituents interaction with this radiation. So what I actually, so I listed down here, just a quick uh, take home message for you guys that the reason for the temperature pro profile, what we do see the, the tropospheric uh, layer, we have a diabetic vertical transport of air masses. That's why the temperatures start decreasing with respect to altitude. And also because of radiative cooling by the water vapors. Like uh, a quick example is like clouds are uh, the condensed water vapors and they uh, start, I mean, bright cooling uh, shades when clouds are there and otherwise you will be exposed to the sunlight. And then absorption in the ozone layer that starts uh, increasing temperature again, it starts where it gets, to, although it's not warmer than the troposphere, but still the temperature behavior actually changes. Oxygen absorption in the thermosphere actually caused this experiment to increase very high recharge particles coming from the sun, That's the sun they are actually interact with the nitrogen and oxygen. And by the way, auroras are happening in the thermosphere. You know that northern, northern lights auroras, they are mainly happening in the thermosphere and they are can be observed in, in the high latitude region of the earth. Uh, there is some noise coming from. Can you a little bit take care of this? It is. So then, what are actually the consequences of these temperature profile? So, because of this adiabatic lapse rate and what you could transport in the troposphere, we have a very strong mixing in the troposphere, and the tropo is actually the Latin word which means for the uh, uh, the mixing, the strong mixing is thing. So it's a very turbulent layer. So all the weather phenomena are taking place mainly in the troposphere. Stratosphere is very stable and calm layer of the atmosphere. Low vertical mixing ratio, uh, vert vertical mixing in the stratosphere. Uh, the air is very aged up in the stratosphere when the air masses actually could propagate to the st uh, stratosphere. Very low humidity in the stratosphere, it's relatively drier as well. Most of the water vapors are located in the low uh, stratosphere. For, for, uh, for further simplicity and understanding, uh, we divided these lower layers into multiple layers, like low stratosphere, mid stratosphere, and upper stratosphere. Similarly, the very immediate layer uh, in the troposphere, we divided into the boundary, we call it boundary layer, mid troposphere, and then the pre troposphere. Troposphere and stratosphere are largely separated regions of the atmosphere and exchange between the two is limited to its specific region through convection in the trop tropics, that is upward mixing of the air masses. And this is only in uh, happening around the equators, 30 north and 30 south, and the tropopause fold, which is downward mixing and through subsidence in the polar re region. So convection is only taking place along the equator region. So coming towards the pollution is a uh, drive from Latin word blue, that means contamination of feature of an earth, of environment and the environment constituted by the land, water, vegetation, and air, all organic, inorganic matter and living organisms, including humans, the interacting natural systems that include all these components, the social, economic, and cultural condition. This all, all these actually constitute the environment. So the pollution then addition of these substance, any substances, the faster rate than the environment can accommodate will be referred as pollution. And particularly air pollution means the presence in the outdoor atmosphere of one or more contaminants such as dust, fumes, gas, mist, odor, 
smoke or vapor in quantities with characteristics, with characteristics and of duration such as to be injurious to the humans, plants or animal. So this is actually the difference, uh, air pollution. So the only art, uh, at any addition of any any pollutant will be, be referred as air pollution when it exceeds certain threshold, which are actually the limits set by uh, various regulatory authorities. Okay, so there are two types of pollutants. Where one, we categorize them into primary pollutants, which are directly emitted from the uh, source. Uh, one example is NO2, CO, H2S, VOCs. And then secondary pollutants, which are formed through chemical uh, reactions in the atmosphere, once an SO2 and ozone. So uh, then here we have the uh, the air uh, the, uh, the classification of air pollutants. Fix it here. So the carbon oxides like CO and CO2 are very important. CO2 is greenhouse gas, carbon monoxide is a air pollutant as well. Sulfur oxide, SO2 and SO3 sulfide, it's not very unstable. It's an intermediate product. Nitrogen oxide, NO and NO2 is taken as a NOx. And N2O nitrous oxide is also part of NOx, but normally it's mainly taken as a greenhouse gas because it's, it's inert in the troposphere and it's only active in the stratosphere. Volatile organic compounds, a lot of compounds are there uh, through oxidation of methane and also non-methane volatile organic compounds. Suspended so particles would be sort of solid particles like dust, asbestos, soot particles that are suspended in the air. Uh, in other words, you can call them aerosols as well. Liquid drop, droplets, pesticides, sulfuric acid, or even the mixture of both solid and liquid and even the, and the gases as well, gas trap, trapped in liquid water, or a solid particle trapped in the gas. Fume is also called aerosols. But chemical oxidant, ozone, hydrogen peroxides, radioactive substances, toxic compounds. So these are some examples. Of so there are two types of standards to, uh, uh, to measure the quality of air, uh, the, the air pollution level. So ambient air quality standards, uh, which are those that deals with the concentration of pollutants in the outdoor atmosphere, particularly outdoor. They are, then they are for indoor, they are separate one. And the list is uh, different uh, from the outdoor as well. Uh, and then source performance standards, mainly these, these are for the station, stationary sources, are those that apply to the emissions of pollutant from specific sources. SPSS are written in terms of mass emissions per unit of time. So this kind of uh, the strength emission rates of that particular source. And so for, in order to develop the emission inventories, SPSS are actually the follows. Okay, so these uh, uh, AQS uh, uh, actually led the basis for the development of air quality indices. An index that is used to report to the public and overall assessment of given day's air quality. So remember, there is a difference between air pollution and there is a difference between the air quality. So I will quickly go to the air quality. Air quality is, uh, uh, so air, uh, okay, so first air pollution, as I mentioned earlier. So air pollution could be the contamination of any constituents that has a level uh, in the exposure that is injurious to the all type of biota and the, uh, that will become air pollution. But air quality is a measure of how clean uh, polluted the air is of a location. And this is substituted by the six um, main uh, criteria air pollutants, which I will tell you uh, later on. The, the air quality is actually the way uh, of showing how clean is the air that we breathe in uh, at different location and different times. And why this is in part because dirty air will make you sick. Uh, sick. And uh, some example I quoted over here, a group of adults across the U six US cities was monitored across 25 years. There were again a, a stark correlation for every 2.5 micrograms per cubic meter reduction of particulate matter aerosols uh, of size PM 2.5 microns, the death rates also decreased by 3.5%. So this is kind of uh, 
the first direct measure that can we get uh, benefit from improving air quality. So nowadays, it's not just our respiratory tracts. Well, upper respiratory tracts are the first immediate exposure to the air pollution, and then the, through the lungs. And then nowadays, a lot of studies have been published that are telling us about how air pollution is not just uh, impacting our uh, lungs and uh, uh, respiratory tract, but also to other uh, prime organs like heart and lungs, brain. And even recent study, a couple of years back, the WHO has uh, established that there is a strong linkage between uh, the brain and diabetes diseases with the air pollution levels. Okay, so what actually makes our air dirty? So particularly, uh, these are the list of sources. That's not uh, confined to only these, but could be others. Normally, transportation sector is uh, very much in, in this business. Power plants industry and other industrial activities are also very major source, particularly in the urbanized spaces. Household fires across the country or across the locations, uh, depending on the type of fuel they're using. Crop residue burning, I mean, the uh, South Asian countries are very much familiar with the mass created by these crop residue burning, particularly during the post monsoon season, we are having a very severe episode of rice paddy burnings across the border, uh, other side of the border and inside the border as well. And then the municipal waste uh, burning as well, this is a major issue across the Pakistan and even I would say across the region as well, dust, dust storms and also some development activities. They are also a major source of various types of the pollutant as well. Some of air pollutants are linked to climate change also. For instance, ozone, which has tropospheric ozone, it is not just an air pollutant or air quality criteria pollutant, but also as a strong greenhouse gas as well. So air quality uh, uh, criteria air pollutants. So this is uh, exactly the difference. So air pollution could be uh, the contamination of any uh, liquid, gas, solid particle to certain threshold limits. But air quality is primarily constituted by these six commonly found air pollutants in the, in the ambient air ozone, tropospheric ozone, by the way. Particulate matter of various sizes, PM2.10, PM2.5, and even uh, uh, bigger sizes as well. Carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, and the lead particles. Okay, so if any particle is other than these six particles that cannot constitute the air quality, air quality is constituted by only these six uh, uh, parameters or variables. So if, he, if, if somebody asks you that, I mean, uh, uh, let's say I'll give you an example of formaldehyde, it's a volatile organ compounds. Is that representative of air quality of any place? So that's, that's answer will be no, because this did not fall in the uh, category of criteria air pollutants. So the, each threshold limits are calculated according, according to for these criteria limit uh, pollutants to their effects on human health and environment as well. So exceeding these threshold, so the, that turns the air quality index to, towards the bad levels. Okay, L let's start with the ozone first. So tropospheric ozone particularly, this is how the uh, vertical distribution of tropospheric ozone looks like. This is the ground level. In the troposphere, close to the uh, uh, boundary layer, we have high level of ozone and tropogenic activities. And then we have in the upper troposphere due to emissions from uh, commercial uh, commercial planes, uh, aviation traffic, and some intrusion from the stratospheric layer as well. Most of the ozone is actually constituted in the stratosphere around 25, maximum around 25 uh, kilometers. And this is actually acting as an ozone shield to protect from uh, UV, harmful UV light. So that's why we categorize that uh, the ozone higher up 
is called the good ozone and ozone in the troposphere is called the bad ozone. Why it is called bad ozone? Because it's highly corrosive in nature. It's a toxic when you inhale to certain levels uh, and it can damage your respiratory tracts and some other impacts. And it is highly reactive, cause rubber to cracks and damage to the lung tissues as well. It's a very strong uh, oxidant severe damages to plants and vegetable uh, vegetation and ultimately the results in the less crop yield as well. So uh, I will quickly go through, I, I guess um, I have already uh, 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 stated this. So the one the important thing is that tropospheric ozone is a powerful greenhouse gas and air pollutant that is harmful to human health, agriculture, crops and ecosystem. So this is mainly constituted by uh, it's by the way, it's not a primary pollutant. It is a secondary pollutants. It's uh, formed in the presence of sunlight with uh, methane of pro byproducts, methane oxidation, carbon monoxide oxidation, non-methane non volatile organic compounds plus NOx. So, v so I referred this as a VOCs uh, altogether and so the NOx so the main ingredients for the tropospheric ozone formation is sunlight plus VOCs plus NOx. So, and there are certain conditions this uh, tropospheric ozone is, is formed. The second one important is particulate matter. Solid and liquid particles suspended in the air is referred as particulate matter. And we categorize them on the basis of their sizes. It's PM2.5 or it's better than suspended particles. In principle, total of particles go to the matter having 10 microns. Okay, and if you see here, this is the, 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 the circle, dark circle is giving you the human uh, hair's cross section and the relative proportion of PM2.5 particles in the PM10 particles. It will be more clear with this picture. Yes, this is human here, and you see here PM10. Five uh, on average, uh, human hair is uh, having a thickness of 50 to 70 micrometers. So if it's a 50 micrometer, then PM10, five uh, sorry, five uh, PM10 particulate can accommodate in a human hair. And within a PM10, we can accommodate PM2.5. You see how smaller these particles are, but their impact is huge. So they, they are both uh, emitted as a part of natural and both anthropogenic activities. So what happens actually? The larger particles are stopped by the body's defense system. The nature has built in some, uh, taken some precautionary measures that you here in your natural system, natural cavity, this actually started as the first immediate filter to filter out all these uh, larger particles. But still PM10 and 2.5, most prominently PM2.5, make its way through to your lungs and then into your bloodstream. And depending on the composition of this particulate matter, it may, might carry some uh, carcinogenic chemicals and also uh, heavy metals particularly, which are also very harmful or damaging to the human, uh, human uh, tissues or human cell tissues. So they cause severe damages to human health. Similarly, the uh, PM10 has a huge repercussion on the environmental or ecosystem as well. And the third one is actually the carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, tasteless, flammable gas that is slightly less denser than the air. The sources uh, are from both natural sources and anthropogenic sources. Natural sources are mainly degradation of chlorophyll during the autumn months, release CO amounting to perhaps 20% of the total CO emissions. Anaerobic decomposition is an indirect way. So methane is produced and methane is oxidized and leading to the formation of CO and some other volatile organic compounds. Anthropogenic sources actually mainly include motor vehicles, fossil fuel burning for electricity and heat, industrial processes, sorry, solid waste disposal. 
Motor vehicles accounts for 60% of the CO2 emissions, mainly it's because of incomplete combustion, uh, particularly during uh, idling phase or startup of the cars, you emit more CO rather than in, during the taxi position. So while limited supply of oxygen accuses incomplete combustion, so in any kind of incomplete combustion will have more CO emissions. Vegetation fires, high solid waste burning, power generation, gas appliances will actually result in CO. So CO sinks extremely agree, agreed that CO is removed from the atmosphere by its reaction with hydroxyl radical, which is taken up, is considered as a detergent of the atmosphere. And most of the uh, atmospheric chemistry is initiated by hydroxyl radical. Soil microorganisms act to remove CO from the atmosphere. The soil is considered as a sink of carbon monoxide and also for the uh, CO2 as well. What is important actually, when the, our C, we inhale CO, we, uh, it reacts with oxygen to, to form carboxy. Well, it's along with oxygen. So uh, it's the CO, when the concentration of CO is higher, then it reacts with uh, oxygen. Uh, it's it's reacts with hemoglobin to form carboxy hemoglobin instead of oxygen oxy hemoglobin, which is uh, when you have more oxygen and relatively in the clean air. So the uh, carboxy hemoglobin is very in, uh, dangerous for uh, bl uh, blood cells. For instance, here is uh, the normal oxygenated blood cell, and this is the carbo uh, poisoned by the carbon monoxide are having exposed to the certain percentage of uh, carboxy hemoglobin. Yeah, so he, these are actually some uh, ratios, uh, the percentage of carboxy hemoglobin, there are symptoms that can happen, even can lead to uh, the casualties, human casualties. Uh, then the next one is actually the nitrogen oxides and its sources, nitrogen oxides, mainly nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. These are mainly two gases. Nitric oxide is very short lifetime. It's very instable. Nitrogen oxide is actually relatively stable lifetime of a couple of years, a uh, couple of uh, hours. So these uh, nitrogen oxides contribute to the problem of air pollution, playing roles in the formation of both small photochemical smoke, by the way, and the acid rain. So uh, these are natural sources of uh, NOx, uh, thunderstorm uh, produce NOx. Organic nitrogen content of soil is the uh, nitrogen cycle. The uh, nitrogen fixation bacteria also emit the NOx. Bottom of the river anaerobic condition microbial activity also slightly contributing to the, uh, the NOx. And uh, when you come about the man-made sources, transportation is the major one, electricity production, uh, uh, and the building and industry is uh, the major prominent sources of NOx. This is very important, uh, actually, why? Because this is uh, involved in uh, in ozone tropospheric ozone formation. In a very clean, uh, let me there is some discrepancy. I have to. Okay, so let me do do that. It was so. It also impacts uh, the airway, infl causing inflammation and all other things. In the stratosphere, it has a several role. The NOx, particularly in the troposphere and in the stratosphere, in the stratosphere, it acts as a as a catalytic cycle to destroy uh, stratospheric ozone. And the ozone hole is one of that uh, example which you, the humanity is actually experiencing. In the troposphere, in the clean atmosphere, it is called null cycle. For instance, here, nitric oxide reacts with ozone to produce NO2 and then atomic oxygen. This atomic oxygen reacts with molecular oxygen to give you ozone. So one ozone is cons consumed and one ozone is produced. So there is no change, basically. And we call this null cycle. But this is not the condition always. This is uh, in the troposphere, very clean air. We have net ozone destruction cycle, like the ozone react can react with CO and then give you O2, which is not harmful for 
Uh, but what happens when you have these polluted uh, atmosphere, like we have more NOx? So this CO reacts with OH to give you CO2 plus H. This H reacts with O2 to give you hydrogen peroxy radical, HO2. So this HO2 reacts with NO to give you NO2. And then NO2 is photolyzed, give you NO plus O, and this O reacts with O2 again, again give you. So in principle, the reaction NO plus O2 is replaced by NO with uh, NO plus HO2. So more NO2 is there, which is more photolyzed. Uh, and then this is more nascent oxygen is produced. And then ultimately, uh, tropospheric ozone is, is found, uh, found in larger quantities. Okay, the next one is sulfur dioxide. It's a colorless gas with sharp, irritating odor and pungent smell. Uh, it's mainly emitted from both volcanoes and uh, uh, from natural and tropical sources. Among natural sources, volcanoes are the uh, prominent sources. And uh, from continuous maintaining gas uh, during degassing phase, basically, ocean and wetlands are also a huge source of. SO2 as a uh, uh, secondary product. Primarily, uh, the oceans and wetlands, they produce H2S and DMS, dimethyl sulfide, which is uh, uh, immediately con converted into sulfur dioxide. Among anthropogenic sources, fossil fuel burning, smelting industry particularly, uh, to retrieve heavy metals from these nickel uh, metal ores, uh, emit a lot of sulfur. And this is like, if you see here, the energy production and distribution is also the main source of, uh, by, by using coal actually. And also residual fuel oil. Thermal energy power production is a major source. Another industrial activity is also the major source. It's a very important because it's in a, 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 it's a release in the atmosphere and, it, and it's converted into sulfuric acid in the gas phase and sulfate particles in the in the liquid phase. So it has health repercussions. Very London, very famous uh, London smog back in 1952. And if you see here, uh, huge casualty rates were there within uh, one week and during that time. So mainly that was uh, the SO2 that was emitted from the chimneys of residential areas. They were using coal as a, as a fuel to heat their spaces. So a lot of SO2 was converted into sulfuric acid and that has toxic effect into the, to the residents of London back in 1952. It also caused you know, uh, asthma and cardiopulmonary diseases. Uh, erosions of buildings, material threat to world heritage, uh, like uh, Taj Mahal is, is uh, the, a, another example that's turning pale, yellowish color, mainly because of this sulfur dioxide. Deforestation as well, and also mainly because of acid rain. It's the main constituent of the acid rain as well. This, uh, the last uh, one is the lead. This is a classification, the classic, Classification of lead as a poisonous substance has, has led to the elimination of lead from the gasoline. Because the lead before it was using as an anti-knocking agent in the, in the engines. And uh, later the techniques were developed to uh, avoid lead the uh, use in the gasoline or petroleum products. To the most common sources of lead exposures are from contaminated soil and human, human uh, homes built before 1970 that were painted using lead paints as well. And the acid batteries are actually the major source nowadays and the smelters are actually the main source. Uh, so this source is definitely varies from area to area, and major sources, again, ore and metal processing, piston engineer craft operations, uh, lead cremation fuel, waste incinerators, utilities, and lead acid batteries. The highest rate concentration of lead are usually found near lead smelters. Uh, yes, and then actually, what are actually the effects? It blurts the ability, affects the blood's ability to carry oxygen. 
can impact the nervous system, can be functioning immune system and develop. It's similar to like other heavy metals uh, like cadmium, uh, chromium, nickel, and arsenic particularly. So if it's a part of the, the uh, part of the particulate matter, then it can uh, cause casualties in the human beings. Can have negative neurological effects in the children spurring behavioral problems and learning deficits or deficiencies. Can cause high blood pressure and heart disease in adults. Okay, so that was all about uh, these uh, criteria through tanks. So these are actually uh, how they constitute. So just to give you, we call you that these are the main sources, vehicle, power generation, household fires, factories, crop burning, municipal waste burning, dust. So these are actually the main fundamental sources who are actually producing, uh, particularly anthropogenic sources, who are actually contributing to the, these pollutants and um, constituting their quality. So what else actually disturbing or can help or uh, can characterize so these are actually geography and the environmental parameters can actually help. So for instance, rain can help you to wash out, but also it can, rain can also damage the environment if it's acid rain or it's contaminated with uh, nitrates and pollutants. Similarly, rain can uh, dilute factor, but it can spread the pollution or pollutant levels to larger areas. Uh, cold airs, uh, particularly inversion layers during uh, winter, what we experience that has, uh, that turns the atmospheric mode in the accumulation mode and it, it, uh, the impacts of these contaminants actually are exhibited many folds. Temperature is also very much, uh, might, might be helpful, might be decreasing. So helpful in a sense, it can activate some chemical reaction like OH to decrease, but it can also help to build new like oxidation of volatile organic compounds to uh, create more uh, toxic elements like formaldehyde uh, emissions. Yes, uh, then the topography or geography is matters a lot because if it's, uh, it's a closed atmosphere, then it has accumulation. If the topography of any city or area is uh, confined with some high rise building or some mountainous region, then it has accumulation mode and its toxicity is higher. And if it's a plain or well, well ventilated, then it's relatively much uh, well, less polluted and have less effects. So what can we do actually, just to give you a quick summary, what we can do to solve this air pollution uh, to reduce or avoid use of uh, uh, excessive use of vehicles, go for carpooling, switch to cleaner vehicles, switch to hybrid vehicles which have less emission footprints, go for electric vehicle if possible, power plants, invest in sulfur handling equipment on coal like uh, pre-processing of coal before it is uh, burned into or even uh, the fossil fuel, not just the coal, but other fossil fuel, desulfurize them before uh, generating electricity. Household fires provide clean, relatively fuels like natural gas is relatively cleaner, or some other electric uh, electricity uh, stoves. And uh, implement pollu uh, pollution laws. This is uh, very much important for Pakistan. There is need to be strict legislation. I mean, legislation is there, but implementation lacks a lot. Provide reliable electricity supply, which is mainly generated by the relatively clean fuel. Stop crop burning and uh, waste burning, municipal waste burning. Try to manage waste through collection, segregation, transport to them, uh, uh, management facilities, treat them, process and dispose them in, in an engineered way, in the in a, in a pro environment way. Afforestation can enforce, can reduce dust storms, dust soil erosion, plant trees and shrubs can help to improve the air pollution uh, footprints. 
sweeping up roads, create green banks and all these activities. So starting from individual to as a community level, so we can have several ways that we can have reduce emission footprints in a very way. So there are two options for you guys, for instance, being an individual, either you, you can fly, have a flight or you can find. Flight is a very easy option, you, but you have to suffer from, you have to relocate yourself. Don't live in the more crucial city if that is not possible. You can stay indoors, you have to limit your activities, uh, mobility, install air purifiers, you have to add on, uh, increase your budget for pure air. A fight in the first step, which is, I am very much advocate of, uh, for the individuals to fight against the air pollution in their own capacity, to try to be the more environmental activist, catalyst, uh, spread the awareness, uh, be the catalyst and contribute at your level bit by bit in the measures using public transport instead of uh, are using cycles, instead of using cars, go for the carpool, and try to invest in the funds which are pro-environment, which are green, and which are sustainable. That will have you, in this way, you can help you. So this was from uh, introduction, I hope uh, it might have helped you guys. So, Ali, uh, over to you, I guess, uh, shall, uh, shall I continue with the question and answer section? If uh, anybody has any question, please ask. Uh, Dr. James has also joined. We'll take a break of 10, 15 minutes. Um, then we'll come back. G, uh, anybody has a question? G, please. Uh, I couldn't understand about the good and bad ozone. I mean, we refer to it after we have damaged it or like without our damage, we categorize it uh, good or bad. And I couldn't catch the idea. Uh, well, the, the, the good ozone is actually the stratospheric ozone. Okay, we call it good, good because it shields us from um, uh, harmful UV radiation coming from the sun. That's why. The bad in, in a sense that it's acted on the air pollutant is a criteria pollutant. Irrespective you uh, you inhale it, it has a severe damage to your lungs, respiratory tracts. It is a very strong oxidant and also uh, bad in a sense because it's, uh, it, ha it, it, it also acts as in a greenhouse gas. But the bad one was further away now. Sorry, say it again. Uh, the bad ozone is further away from the good ozone, right? Or uh, Yeah, bad ozone is in the troposphere, in the troposphere, in the very low layer, layer. So if it's bad, how is it impacting us? If it's further away and obviously we are not breathing it in. Uh, no, I mean, it's invisible, but the thing is that, I mean, the, 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 this is how the air quality is actually going to tell us. The air quality indices, AQI, actually that meant for this because uh, the, this constitute tells, I mean, how good or whether good or bad the air is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, sorry, Dr. Fahim, uh, may I request you to please... Uh, stops screen sharing so the screen is back to the normal uh yes yes okay i'm fine oh. and, and shall uh, i start sharing uh, first okay you okay may uh, you may ask me a question Just yes uh, sir um uh, sir i want to ask about uh, lead as a criteria pollutant uh, yeah. As we know that lead is a heavy metal and it's not present everywhere. Like, uh, why do we have included in criteria pollutant? And my uh, second question is. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, and my second question is, is there any legislation specifically presented for these criteria pollutants? So that if we want to say somebody that, why are you doing this? Uh, can we have some logical legisl legislation behind that? Uh, specifically, I'm talking about criteria pollutants. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, well, this uh, in the very beginning, when the, the leaded fuel was used and the lead was very common uh, 
in the, the lead was actually considered uh, separately. But nowadays, normally major five criteria proteins. And this, yes, you rightly mentioned that the lead is all, that might also be the part of PM2.5 and PM10 as well. So, and the, coming back to your second question. So again, air quality indices are actually set on, on the certain uh, concentrations of all these criteria proteins, their concentration levels in the amphibian layer, and also their toxicity. So uh, legislation is there for each and every criteria protein. So they have uh, certain averages for like some air pollution and these criteria proteins are measured against eight hour average. Some of them are measured against 24 hour average, but their toxicity level is actually different. So they are actually, tomorrow in the, my lecture, I will tell you how we constitute a quality index for a place and how it is taken as, as a reference air quality of any place. So normally it is, the legislation is there. Thank you. Um, we'll take one Thank more Thank you question. so much. We'll take one more question, then we'll take a break. Uh, after break, we'll resume with uh, one of our uh, uh, speaker from NASA, Dr. James. Gene, we'll take a question from Dr. Asif. Yes, so uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to ask the question. Um, this is actually a comment. Uh, it's in relation to the previous question, which one of the participants asked about the bad ozone. And I think there was slight confusion because she was referring to the ozone being far away. Now, the, the tropospheric ozone is actually not far away. It's present at the ground level. And that's why, because it's very near to humans, and uh, plants as well, it can cause damage. So the ozone, which is in the upper stratospheric layer, that is beneficial, whereas the ozone, which is lower near to the ground, that's known as the tropospheric ozone. And because it's so near to the ground, it can have impacts on humans and plants, depending on the concentrations. So I just want to uh, point out that clarification. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Uh... With this note, uh, Dr. Fahim, with your permission, and uh, our guest speaker who has joined uh, on the time, we are uh, running 10 minutes below the schedule, uh, behind the schedule. So, uh, uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a 10 minute, 15 minutes break. Uh, as per oh, my watch, it is. Ali, if we could, could skip, uh, could confine the break to five minutes? Gee, sure. We'll take a five minutes break. So, it's 5.45. So we'll come back at 5.50. 50, yeah. Okay. So see you 5.50. Take five minutes. All yeah. right. <laughs> 